And then uh, next we come to your Driver of the Dead. This is a vampire, a 3-2, when it uh, dies. Return to a creature card from the preferred man costs two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. So uh, it's a way to just bring something back from your graveyard. A little bit of recursion. Playing the Blood Flow Connoisseur. Sacrifice creature, put a 1-1 counter on the Blood Flow Connoisseur. So another pump creature, it's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Blood Seeker, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. Blood Thorn Vampire, uh, sacrifice a creature. Vampire gets 2-2 at the end of turn. Oh, I think I have a duplicate of that one. Uh oh, that may be a thing. Can I have a duplicate? No, just similar names. <laughs> blood Thorn, Blood Bond. That happens. So then we have the Marauding Light Priest. It's a vampire cleric. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. So, uh, similar to the theme of uh, the Cordial Vampire. Whenever Cordial Vampire or another creature dies, you put a one with counter on each vampire you control. It's very polite about it, though. The Vindictive Vampire. Whenever another creature you control dies, it deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Uh, vampire Aristocrat. Vampire Rogue. Sacrifice a creature. It gets 2 2 till the end of the turn, so it's another 2 2 that can pump itself up. The Rufus Callblade uh, gets 2 1 as long as the opponent has 10 or less life. The Cutthroat is just a mana sink kind of creature, so any of those turns late in the game, if you don't have much going on and you need something to just sort of dump some mana into, you can level it up. So level 1 and 2 gets Death Touch and becomes a 4 3. Uh, level 3 plus it gets First Strike and Death Touch and becomes a 5 4. Uh, and to start off, it's a 3 2, so it's not terribly weakened. Knight of the Ebon Legion, it's a single black mana for a vampire knight. You can pay three, and it gets plus three, plus three, and gains death touch until the end of the turn. At the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four or more life this turn, you put a 1 1 counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion, and he starts off with a 1 2. So if you have the ability to do that, you can play him on the first turn, or the second turn, and then use a dark ritual and pump him immediately and hit somebody for four and he starts off right at the beginning of his bigger. We have the Butcher of Malakir. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So it incentivizes people not to hit you. Um, Markov, Patrician, Lifelink, 3-1. Uh, so you gain some life. Pulse Tracker. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses one life. It's a one drop for 1-1. One, one. A Indulgent Aristocrat is a vampire with life link. You sack a creature, put a one more counter on each vampire you control. Uh, vampire Outcast, Bloodthirsty 2. If an opponent was dealt damage this turn, it comes into play with two one more counters on it. It has life link. It's a 2 2 to start. Then you have the Falcon Wrath Noble, a uh, vampire with flying. When it or another creature dies, target player loses one life. You gain one life. And yes, it does say target players. It's not all players, but it can be handy. Singir Autocrat. So this guy is not a vampire, but the artwork led me to believe he was a vampire, and he has the word Singir in it. And again, it just sort of fit the flavor. I like that when he comes into play, he get two, three, zero, one black surf creature tokens into play. So it's just a way to sacrifice something to have an effect take place or pump up something. So I kind of like that. When it leaves play, you remove the surf tokens from the game. Calastria Highborn is a vampire shaman. Whenever it or another vampire you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you pay black. If you do, target player loses two life and you gain two life. So you can sort of extort your opponents. Um, with. <clears throat> vampire Neonate, a single one drop for a zero three. You can pay two and tap it. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So it's like that standing effect on the table. Shadow Alley Denzian, the Vampire Rogue, whenever a black creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gains Intimidate until the end of the turn, which means it can't be blocked except for by artifact creatures and creatures that share a color with it. Natox Scavenger is a Vampire Rogue, Flying life, Lifelink, Death Touch. Its power is equal to 1 plus the number of card types among cards your opponent's graveyards. So it's a bit of an odd duck, um, but if you have sorceries and enchantments and creatures and Artifacts and graveyards, he gets bigger. Malakir Blood Witch, flying protection from light when it enters the battlefield. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of vampires you control. 
and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. I have had this go off in a game when I've had a bunch of vampires out, and it is gross. Kru Bloodsucker, another vampire, another creature you control with toughness four or greater dies. Each opponent loses two life. You gain two life. Pay three, sacrifice another creature. You put a one counter on the Bloodsucker. Bloodhost, um, it's another vampire. It's a three three. You pay two and one in the black. Sacrifice another creature. You put a one counter on Bloodhost and you gain two life. You see a lot of the synergies between the life gain and things are getting bigger and your opponents taking damage and you gaining more life. And, you can kind of enter into a loop of life gain and life loss. And, uh, Blood Rate Invoker, Vampire Shaman, target player loses three life, you gain three life. That costs eight. So it's really just a mana sink. Usually it's just a creature to sacrifice to something else. Captivating Vampire, other vampires you control get one one, so it's got an anthem effect. Tap five untapped vampires, gain control of target creature, it becomes a vampire in addition to its other types. So it's a nice way to steal something from somebody else on the table. Uh, Ravenous Vampire, a really old card um, from 1996. Flying 3-3, three, three. during your upkeep sacrifice a non-artifact creature, put a woman counter on the Ravenous Vampire or tap Ravenous Vampire. I have another old one from this one's from Ice Age. It's a Krovokian Vampire. And it's, look at the text. I mean, it's like a mountain of text on this thing. At the end of the turn in which any creature is damaged by the Kurvokian Vampire and put into any graveyard, put that creature directly into play under your control. Treat that creature as though it were un... as if it just summoned, so it gets some in this. If you lose control of the Vampire or the Vampire leaves play, bury the creature. So... Basically... You steal their creatures. As long as you control the Vampire. The vampire Lacerator, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless an opponent has ten or less life, so... A little tricky for you to play that one. Viscera Seer, sacrifice a creature to scry one. The Voldar and Pariah, Vampire Horror, sacrifice three other creatures to transform it. It has also got Madness on it, which you would think you saw in the Madness deck. And it transforms into the Abolisher of Bloodlines. An Eldrazi Vampire, flying. When this creature transforms into the Abolisher of Bloodlines, target opponent sacrifices three creatures. It becomes a 6-5 flying Eldrazi Vampire. So it gets pretty gross. It gets pretty gross. And it stays a vampire, so all the other vampire effects um, that you haven't played would affect it as well. Balustrade Spy uh, enters the battlefield, target player reveals cards at the top of their library until they reveal a land card, and they put those cards into their graveyard. So it's it's a nice mill card for, um, for the vampires. And then I have one combo in here that's kind of crazy. Triskelion and Mephidros the Vampire. Each creature you control becomes a vampire and just other creature types, and it has whenever this creature deals one damage to a creature put a woman counter on the creature. Triskelion is an artifact, so an artifact creature comes into play with three one one counters on it, you remove a one one counter on it, and it does one damage to each to target creature or player. So essentially with these two together, you machine gun the entire table down. It's uh, pretty gross. I have Grave Pact in the deck, so whenever a creature I control dies, uh, each player on the table has to sacrifice a creature. I've got Famine, uh, deals 3 damage to each creature and each player. Um, Dark Ritual, of course. Urge to feed, target creature gets minus 3, minus 3 to the end of turn. You may tap any number of untapped vampire creatures you control. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of those vampires. That's why that card's in there, just to pump up my vampires. Uh, the minus 3, minus 3 is not a really great effect. Uh, Dr Dead Reckoning, you can put a target creature card from a your graveyard on top of your library if you do. It deals damage equal to that card's power to target creature. So it's a way to kill something. Reanimate, you put a creature card from a graveyard into play under your control. Lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Culling the weak, sacrifice a creature to add black mana to your mana pool, four black. A stronghold discipline, it's a sorcery. Each player loses one life for each creature they control. Court of Ambition, when it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card. If you're the monarch instead, each opponent loses six life unless they discard two cards. So that can be pretty brutal late game. Cabal Ritual, of course, add three to mana pool unless you have threshold and you add five. Inbringers Revel, this is a really old, weird enchantment card. Um, 
I may have put it in here simply because I really like the art on it. <laughs> um, pay four. It's an enchantment. Return to a creature card from a graveyard to its owner's hand. Any player may play this ability, but only any time they could play a sorcery. Curse of the Shallow Graves. Enchant a player whenever that player attacks. And whenever a player chants, attacks and enchant a player with one or more creatures, that attacking player may put a 2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tap. So this is here to incentivize people to attack somebody who's not you. Uh, bubbling Luck, until uh, the end of turn, whenever you tap a swamp, it produces an additional black mana. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but honestly, for one black mana, if you have five swamps out, that's a lot of mana. So it can be pretty, pretty good. Now we're getting into the artifacts of the deck. And so of course we have a Soul Ring. We're running a Jet Medallion. Your black spells cost one less colorless to play. Lash Wraith, which is really, really, really gross. Uh, it's a living weapon. When it comes into play, you can put a 0-0 black germ token onto the battlefield and attach this to it. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each swamp you control. It costs you two Phyrexian, which can either be paid with black or two life. And it's only four, so it's not, it's not an expensive card to get out there. But it's something you want when you have a lot of swamps, obviously. And then the rest of the deck is literally that. It's swamps. Lots of swamps. There are 85 songs. So that's, that is the very basic uh, N1, the Rune Sage, Vampire Tribal deck. Of course, I put it in the Blood Red Sleeves because it's vampires. And uh, let me know what you thought of the deck in the comments below. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Hit that bell notification button so you don't miss out on more videos. Uh, and again, I do a lot of different content on my channel. I do magic. I do some toy collecting. I'm also a cartoonist for several magazines, so you'll often see me doing artwork. And uh, I also build things and do lots of model making stuff. So something here for somebody. Um, feel free to check it out. Until next time.